was that if you you if you fertilize uh, uh, during the summertime when the grass is growing a lot, the grass can intercept all that nitrogen. Uh, but uh, the problem was uh, that when you have actually uh, made those, all those studies, uh, uh, one of the sentences there was like, do not fertilize uh, if a storm is imminent, because uh, if we get three, four, five inches of rain, then at that point, uh, uh, basically, you lose all the nitrogen by, by, by leaching. Um, and so what did they do? What are all these ordinance based off? They are all based off that sentence. Do not fertilize if a storm is approaching. And basically, what they, how they read it was in the summer, a storm is always approaching. So we are going to not let people fertilize during the summertime. Uh, that, that's basically why you're not allowed to fertilize until October 31st. Now, October 31st, uh, the grass is still growing, so it's fine. Uh, but if you're thinking about fertilizing during the winter time, uh, well, I strongly discourage you to fertilize in January and February because the grass is growing so little that you don't really need to, to fertilize. So you have four pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet per year outside the blackout period that goes from May until October. So when you should fertilize, well, if you have four pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet per year and you can apply only one per application, I would suggest you 1st of November, so as soon as the fertilized ordinance is over. Uh, then uh, wait a month and a half, uh, December 15th should be your last of the year, and then wait for next spring. Uh, fertilize in March, and then fertilize right before the blackout period. And uh, that should basically give you your, your fertilized plant. Um, Henry was telling you, um, quick or soluble fertilizer, slow or controlled fertilizer. I get this question all the time. Which fertilizer should I use? So nitrogen is nitrogen. Any form of nitrogen needs to be converted to nitrate, so NO3, for the plants to absorb it. Okay, And it doesn't really matter where it comes from. So there's no fertilizer that's better than the other. There is for sure a huge difference between quick or soluble fertilizer or slow or controlled fertilizer, okay? Quick or soluble is usually urea and uh, all the ammonium nitrate, uh, sulfate and phosphate uh, that are used in golf courses. Uh, these guys are readily available for the plant to pick up. So you fertilize, you water it down a little bit and the nitrogen is already there. All of the nitrogen is already there. And if the plant cannot absorb it, and then it gets leached. And that's why you, when you use a quick or soluble form of urea, you can only fertilize at 0 0.5 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet. While when you use a slower control release form of nitrogen, you can fertilize a little higher, one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. Uh, Biosolids uh, and compost uh, are usually slow or controlled uh, form of urea. Uh, I was at the University of California before coming to UF, and I was a big, big uh, uh, advocate for using compost. Uh, I always told people, use compost. That's great. I am not at Florida. I'm not in Florida. Why is that? Exactly for the same reason I just told you, because our soils are really sandy and we have a lot of water everywhere. And when we compost, we don't really know what we are creating. So we don't really know how much nitrogen and how much phosphorus are there. And so when we fertilize, we don't really know how much we, how many nutrients we are applying uh, and compost usually is really nutrient rich. And there may be the chance that even though you're trying to do the right thing, even though you wanna do the right thing and recycling all this stuff, uh, you may actually contribute to pollution without knowing it. Okay. Other type of slow release fertilizer that are really good are the col uh, coated ureas. Okay. What are coated ureas? Think about an M&M. &M. Okay. You have uh, the chocolate uh, that is around your nuts. That, that, that is exactly what it is. So basically you have uh, your nutrients that are coated uh, on uh, uh, something, on some material that uh, needs to be broken down before the nutrient is released, okay? 
Uh, how is the nutrient released? Uh, usually the big thing here is hydrolysis. What's hydrolysis? The action of water. And that is why you need to water your fertilizer in. Uh, on top of that, when we have storms or when we have big rains, uh, if we have a couple of inches, that's not a big of a deal because basically what that rain does uh, is slowly releasing the nutrients in the environment. The other big thing is the temperature. Fortunately, here down in Miami or, or Broward uh, or, or Palm Beach, as a matter of fact, the uh, temperature is always pretty decent so that um, those fertilizer keep contributing to uh, nutrient. How long does a slow release fertilizer uh, work? Uh, up to six to eight weeks. And that's why basically I told you when you, when you have four uh, pounds of fertilizer per year, fertilize beginning of November, mid-December, then wait because the grass doesn't need it. Wait for March and then uh, uh, go and fertilize right before your blackout fertilizer period. Phosphorus. Phosphorus, uh, is, as I just said, uh, a big pollutant. Uh, people do not realize that. And, and phosphorus usually is really big uh, in compost. Um, a lot, if you are composting fruit or stuff like that, those fruits, chances are, have a lot of, uh, of phosphorus. Uh, phosphorus is uh, a key for a plant to flower and to produce fruits. Okay. And so that's why when you compost in, chances are that you have a lot of phosphorus. Uh, established turf grass does not need a lot. And there's usually enough in the soil unless you have really bad construction site soil. Uh, there's enough in the soil for the turf grass to pick up. And that's why we actually never recommend phosphorus. So the fact that the ordinance tells you that you cannot apply phosphorus, it shouldn't really worry you much. Potassium is the third element, uh, NPK, right? Potassium is the third element. Uh, the good thing about potassium is that your body can actually uh, digest it. When you eat a banana, that's what you're eating. You're eating potassium. Like majority of a banana is potassium. And that is why there's no restriction on potassium. Uh, potassium is big, especially for cold resistance. Okay. And it's something that we don't really need down here in South Florida, unfortunately. So uh, during the blackout period, uh, you can fertilize with potassium. Yes, absolutely. If you use 0060 during the blackout period, the fertilizer blackout period, you get no ticket. Uh, that's not a problem at all. Is it going to do something? Um, mostly not. Okay, You will mostly not see a response to that potassium fertilization. Potassium is good against cold, mostly, and against diseases. Diseases, uh, majority of diseases that potassium is going to protect you against uh, are wintertime diseases. So brown patch, large patch, uh, you should apply potassium September, uh, late September, October. Um, so is that something you can do instead of nitrogen? No. Is it something that is going to harm the environment or the plant? No, uh, it, it's, it's completely up to you. If you have a company and you have clients uh, that really want you to fertilize uh, and uh, they say that the ordinance is stupid and they want you to fertilize and you have a contract that says you fertilize, well, then at that point, apply during the summertime, 0060. Don't tell them what it is. Uh, they'll be happy. Uh, it's not going to harm the environment. Uh, it's not going to harm the grass. It's not even going to make it better. But uh, if you want them to feel better about themselves, uh, watching you uh, applying something, then then use potassium. Um, magnesium, uh, magnesium is mostly for plants. Okay, magnesium is not among those three numbers. Uh, it's a micronutrient. Uh, so if you read the label, it can tell you that there's uh, some magnesium to it. Uh, for turf, it's it's not uh, it's not a big thing, but Ponds may be magnesium deficient. So if you are fertilizing ponds, uh, then that is something you wanna you wanna look into. This is actually my big recommendation. If you cannot 
apply any nitrogen during the summertime, uh, during your blackout fertilizer period, uh, then uh, this would probably be your, your best option. And it's iron. Now, iron is heavily involved in uh, um, photosynthesis. Okay, heavily involved in photosynthesis. More iron, more photosynthesis, more chlorophyll, and so on and so forth. So iron is going to give you a color response, an immediate color response. You apply iron to your lawn and it becomes immediately dark green, okay? The thing is, iron is still not a substitute for nitrogen. Nitrogen produces and induces growth. Iron produces technically more color, okay? So, so that that, but that is going to get you for sure a darker, uh, a darker um, lawn. On top of that, iron, uh, <clears throat> when you apply, iron is not soluble at high pH. And down here, we usually have pH of seven of higher because we have a lot of limestone uh, and so on and so forth. And so, grass may get iron deficiency. How should you apply iron? Uh, soluble form. Soluble form is the best because uh, as soon as you apply it, basically it gets non-soluble and the plant cannot pick it up. So you should apply, you should do foliar fertilization for, for iron. Now, uh, Henry told you a really precise number, one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. How much? is one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet in terms of fertilizer. That's the million dollar question. And that's how we're gonna calculate it now. The first thing you need to know when you fertilize is determine the area of application, okay? So go out with a measuring tape or, or whatever you have uh, and uh, measure uh, your lawn. Uh, chances are huge. Chances are uh, you do not have a perfect rectangle. Um, usually the, the best thing you can have is a perfect rectangle. That never happens. Uh, but try to determine your area being conservative. So like in this case, we have 30 feet uh, by, by 20 feet uh, before, uh, before the plants start. Uh, and uh, more or less, we assume a, a 60, um, six, uh, sorry. Uh, 600, uh, uh, 600 square feet. Then, at that point, you need to know your source of nitrogen. Source of nitrogen, as Henry said, as low-release nitrogen fertilizer is 65. Miami-Dade considers as low-release fertilizer a uh, fertilizer that has at least 65% slow-release nitrogen. How do you know that? Well, usually these guys, the sulfur-coated urea, the polymer-coated urea, and so on and so forth, these guys are the guys that you can apply at one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. But the good thing is that you can calculate yourself how much slow-release nitrogen it's in the bag. If the bag doesn't say it, all you have to do is read the label. Label is the law, always, all the time. Uh, this fertilizer here, 30, 0, 10, so 30% nitrogen, okay? Total nitrogen in the bag is 30%. And then you scroll down and check, and it tells you, oh, look at this. 27% of the nitrogen in the bag comes from polymer-coated urea, okay? So how do we know the total percent of slow-release nitrogen? We take the percentage of uh, slow-release nitrogen divided by the total nitrogen, so in this case, 27 divided by 30, multiply by 100. 90% of nitrogen in this bag is slow-release nitrogen. My cutoff point, as Henry said, is 65% slow-release nitrogen. So can I use this as a slow-release source of nitrogen? Yes. I can apply one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet when I use this fertilizer. Okay? You have recommendation, uh, uh, please. We believe that uh, slow release nitrogen, if slow release nitrogen is 30% of above, uh, then we can consider that a slow release source uh, of nitrogen, a slow release fertilizer. Miami Dade, as Henry said, doesn't care. 
it is absolutely the strictest ordinance about that. Only Miami-Dade in the state of Florida believes that you need to use at least 65% of slow-release nitrogen. So be careful because when you buy a bag of fertilizer, it may be legal in the state of Florida, but it may not be legal for uh, Miami-Dade. Step three. So we have our fertilizer, which we decide it's a slow-release nitrogen, has at least 65% slow-release nitrogen. And we want to apply one pound per thousand square feet. Million dollar, dollar question now is how much fertilizer do I need to apply to get one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet? Quite easy again, okay? Uh, all you have to do is, first thing as always, know the three number, 15, zero, 15. So what happens is that in 15% of nitrogen in the bag, of uh, um, fertilizer in the bag is nitrogen, what do you have to do? All you have to do is take 100, divide it by the percent of nitrogen in the bag, and it gives you the amount of fertilizer that you need to apply to achieve one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet, okay? This example, you take 100, divide it by 15, gives me six and a half, and that, is the amount, the pounds of fertilizer that gives me one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. In this case, uh, I have my fertilizer that's at least 65% low release nitrogen. I apply six pounds and a half to give me one pound of nitrogen, okay? To help you visualize, we have uh, our 6.6 uh, pounds, 6.5 uh, pounds of nitrogen. Uh, we weighed it out. One pound of that material is going to be nitrogen. The rest uh, that's in the fertilizer, it's whatever. In this case, uh, another pound is going to be uh, is going to be potassium, right? And then what's the rest? Uh, well, the coating, uh, the manganese, uh, the iron, uh, the you name it. Okay, uh, but this is basically what it tells you: six point five for these for these example, six point five pounds of nitrogen is of uh, uh, fertilizer is going to give you one pound of nitrogen. If you don't want to calculate, uh, this table is much, much better. Uh, we have a uh, different formulation. So for instance, these are 6% nitrogen, 10% nitrogen, 12% nitrogen, 15% nitrogen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the amount of fertilizer that you need to give to achieve one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet, okay? Uh, for instant, uh, here it is, uh, if we have a uh, 16% uh, nitrogen in the bag, uh, all we have to do is take 100 divided by 16. And here we go, 6.25 pounds of fertilizer to get one pound of nitrogen. Problem is, uh, you never get to uh, 1,000 square feet in your backyard. You usually have different numbers. Uh, so you either do the proportion or Take a screenshot of this table because it may help you out, okay? I give you 10 seconds to take a, a picture or a screenshot for this table in case you're lazy and you don't wanna do your math, okay? Going, going, gone. Other thing you need to do, always properly calibrate your uh, equipment. You, despite if you are using a, a, a boom, so despite if you're applying it uh, foliarly or you're using a, a, a spreader, a granular spreader, you need to know exactly how much, uh, what's your speed and how many passes you are doing to achieve uh, the correct amount of fertilizer. What we do usually is uh, we try to encourage people uh, to apply going east-west and north-south, okay? Example before, when you have a 15 0 uh, you have 15% nitrogen in the bag, you had to apply 6.6 .6 pounds of fertilizer per thousand square feet. Uh, Half of this amount uh, try to apply going one way, half of the amount uh, try to apply the other way. So you basically create a grid and you cover your whole loan. 
what happens if you're not uniform in spreading out your fertilizer? You may get green patches somewhere, or you even worse, you actually may burn some area because you're giving too much nitrogen and not providing enough nitrogen to another area. So uh, the annual fertility rate, uh, uh, why did Miami Dade came out with four pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet? Uh, what's the magic number there? Because basically that's, that's the table they got from us, okay? Um, here in Miami Dade, we would uh, uh, given a 12 month growing season, uh, our recommendation we were be were between four and six pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet per year. Uh, obviously, what they got is they got uh, the lowest end of the deal. So they are telling you no more than four pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet per year. Can you make grass survive with that amount? Yes, of course. Uh, it's not a problem. My problems are usually, um, I can actually make grass survive with less than four pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet per year. As a matter of fact, uh, older grass needs less nitrogen. The older your lawn gets, the less nitrogen it gets, the less food you need to provide. Um, those are all factors that you guys actually um, can take in, uh, in consideration. Uh, sometimes there's people that don't even apply fertilizer and that's that's totally fine if they're happy. Remember, this industry is based on one thing and it's aesthetics, okay? And aesthetics changes from one person to the other. If you think your grass looks phenomenal, then let it be, okay? Uh, you 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 save money and, and uh, you don't need to go out and, and buy fertilizer. If you want a better lawn, then of course you can go out and, and, and fertilize. But the truth is, it's all about customer satisfaction. Now, if you're dealing with an HOA, the thing is slightly, slightly different. But but if you're not uh, and you think your grass looks fine, then, then absolutely be it. Other question you guys didn't really know. Um, well, half of you know. St. Augustine grass needs more nitrogen than soja grass. Um, the amount of fertilizer you give actually depends a lot on your species. Uh, there's not a lot of bahia grass here down south because bahia grass unfortunately likes acidic soil. So you find bahia grass, uh, take turnpike, drive to Orlando, you start seeing bahia grass after Port St. Lucie uh, because the soil up there starts becoming more acidic. If you get Neutral soil, unfortunately, bahia grass, yes, it establishes, but it does not persist. Uh, and that's that's the problem. You need a you need a low pH. Uh, same thing, same thing with centipede grass that you basically don't need to fertilize. So basically our more conservative options are are, are out of the question here. Uh, zoysia grass, you need to fertilize it less. Uh, zoysia grass, actually, you can fertilize it. Uh, our highest recommendation for South Florida was four pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet, but you can even apply uh, two or three pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet and, and, and zoysia grass is going to do the trick. Also, when you fertilize zoysia, it's better to fertilize it maybe a little bit more often and at lower uh, rates. You don't need to go with one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. Other things you can check. We are we are making big progress on, on new St. Augustine grass cultivars. Uh, Citra Blue is the new release uh, from University of Florida. Citra Blue is is a, it's quite a peculiar grass. Uh, what happens with Citra Blue is that it has a really nice dark color, and so you need to fertilize it less than regular Floratum, let's say. But the problem is uh, um, it grows a lot horizontally, and so it becomes uh, really spongy. Uh, so some people may like it, some people don't like it, but basically when you, when you walk on it, uh, it seems like you're walking on a trampoline. So if you would just, uh, or if you have or had uh, sugarcane mosaic virus, um, if you have an infection of sugarcane mosaic virus, and you have or want to remove uh, your turf grass and, and change it, 
Citra Blue is an option, but um, go look at it before you buy it. Uh, this is good for every for every um, cultivar or species. Take a look at it before you buy. It. Don't buy it close box. As Henry said, um, always know your audience because yes, Miami Dade is a really strict one in South Florida. For South Florida, is the strictest one. Uh, but every single county, every single town, every single municipality may have an ordinance in place. And really, believe me, the last thing you want to do is getting a ticket because you're fertilizing your lawn because that really ruins your day. All right. Uh, bottom line, best, uh, best management practices. Uh, so a proper dance lawn uh, is your best defense against weed and, and nutrient leaching. Um, what does that mean? That means that uh, yeah, you wanna keep your lawn happy and healthy, uh, but doesn't mean water it every night, okay? That's exactly the opposite. Water it when it needs it, fertilize it when it needs it, and so on and so forth. Apply fertilizer only at the correct amount, okay? What we just discussed, more is not better. Dumping tons of fertilizer there is not going to help you with anything. Uh, as Henry said, uh, maintain a buffer zone around water bodies. If you guys have, uh, if you're nice and lucky enough to have a water front house, uh, you need to use deflectors and 10 feet from the water body. Uh, the soil test is if you only believe that you need something you're not getting. If not, if the grass looks good, do not soil test don't worry about it use fertilizer with no phosphorus uh, fertilize when turf is actively growing so that's why i'm telling you try not to fertilize january and february down here in south florida yes the grass is green but it's not really pushing so wait for the spring uh, after you fertilize uh, irrigate uh, with around more or less a quarter of an inch of water to actually start getting that nutrients slowly released uh, for the plant to be available if you sod do not fertilize newly sodded plants because they can fertilize from the sod farm okay so new sod does not need fertilizer wait a couple of months before fertilizing it and then uh, if you have a spill uh, or, or something, keep it off driveways, sideway, sidewalks and patios, because that is runoff that actually may pollute the environment. And with that, I thank you very much for being here. And I guess that Henry now is going to launch again the, um, the, the poll. And uh, is there any question? If there's any question, you can either unmute or write it on the chat. If not, before you disconnect, uh, please, Guy, uh, answer the poll again so we make sure you didn't fall asleep uh, and, and uh, listen to the talk. Uh, and now you know the correct answer. Henry, can you go? Yeah. Any questions so far? Don't be shy. Okay, I don't see any question here. All right, so, me, so let me launch uh, again the... the post. <laughs> and if you guys see it, please please, please, please start answering so we make sure you guys didn't fall asleep. Thank you very much. You're doing amazing, guys. All right, well, I guess, I guess you did not fall asleep, huh?
the uh oh, oh didn't get the quiz patrick you should actually see it on your screen um francisco is there an app for the fertilizer ordinance yes henry just posted the link a couple of comments before I already just posted it again. Patrick, I really don't know. Uh, I don't see any ordinance for Broward County. That is correct, Ryan. Broward County doesn't have an ordinance, but City of Fort Lauderdale does. So make sure you know your town doesn't have one. Yeah, Hallendale Beach also. Yep. Uh, Aventura, I think. But Broward County does not have an ordinance. All right. right. Any looks other like, question? Yep. Yeah, looks like, and you guys didn't fall asleep, so thank you so much. And Harry, will you be able to send me the results for this? Yeah, sure. So any other question, guys? We have a couple of minutes here. Yeah, any other question? We, we are still here. Uh, any comments, Steve, regarding fertilizing Bermuda grass? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, the, the, do you have Bermuda grass? Because, okay, Bermuda grass is uh, um, the most nitrogen-loving species we have out there. Um, the, the, the best, if you can do it, if you can do it, it meaning if you're, uh, uh, if you don't have a fertilizer on it, the best you can do, the problem with the Bermuda grass is that it's, it's really time consuming to manage, but the best thing you can do would be applying small amounts every so often. So basically, uh, using ammonium sulfate, let's say, apply a quarter of a pound of nitrogen every two weeks. That is the best thing you can do for, for Bermuda grass. If you can't, then basically follow the same recommendation we just discussed for, for St. Augustine. Uh, definitely, Bermuda grass loves nitrogen way more than soja. Um, our recommendation for Bermuda grass would be six pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet per year, if you can. Uh, but uh, Patrick, sorry, but uh, Harry already closed the already closed the thing. Okay. Um, any other question? Sorry, it was mute. The CU so will be sent to everybody by uh, email. Uh, give me a couple of days to send it, uh, the recording also. Um, the presentation, uh, Marco, I don't know if we can send the presentation via... Yeah, uh, I, 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 via I can file. say it to you. I can say it to you if you want. Are there governments, any other agency except for blackout? No, we are the only agency except for blackout because we do research. And uh, in case we want to study the effect of a particular management practices uh, that we believe it's mismanaged, then we can do it uh, because we get the results and then we can get like a worst case scenario. Uh, but other than that, no, uh, nobody is, uh, is exempt from blackout if you have it in place. Where would one send a soil test for nutrient analysis? Uh, um, UF extension. Yeah, we send it to Gainesville uh, for, for analysis over there. Uh, this is a University of Florida's uh, soil testing, or you can send it to a private lab. Uh, there are not many here in South Florida, so you need to send it to Central Florida, North Florida. And then a good question, is there an, an accepted methodology for sampling a residential turf loan for soil testing? No. Um, what we recommend, though, is that um, when you sample, 
you sample at the same depth. Usually they tell you how much dirt they need, the amount of dirt they need. And the only thing you can do is that like, for instance, when you sample, always sample at four inches or always sample at six inches. Majority of your roots are four inches. You don't need to go lower than that. Okay, four to six, that's, that's what you want. And when you send it out, remove your turf grass because uh, that may influence your results. Okay, so if you wanna know what's in the soil, you basically remove your leaves. Uh, Harry, uh, Ryan is asking you if you can, well, perfect, there we go. Harry is always on top of things. That's right. Uh, Jimmy, a uh, water sample uh, test. Uh, I have some I can send to you or you guys, if you're interested, they have this um, PDF file, so I cannot post it here. Um, it's private, private labs. I don't think you, Gainesville, I don't think is doing water samples. Not sure. Water, no, uh, they don't. Uh, USDA here does water samples here at the center, but they're quite expensive. Gotcha. All right, guys, it's uh, almost 1 p.m. Uh, wish you a happy weekend. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, your participation. It's, it's great. So um, be safe. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.